Now if I take this undo slider back, and let's go to back to our simple shape here, where we basically took this sphere and projected all the way back out so that we're overtaking the form of our original object here. And of course we have new surface, let's go ahead and change it to zero, so we are actually projecting that original geometry back out to a new form. Now if I overtake this object completely, we've already talked a little bit about how we can blend here. So this will blend that all the way back to our original form and then back out to our new project primitives. So you can kind of blend between them. There's another couple sliders we can talk about. One is opacity and one is max displacement. So if we take this opacity slider and we do this one, it's gonna be very similar to the blend. And essentially what this is doing is applying a global opacity on the projection. So it's making this, this projection shape just more or less opaque. So here we are at like, a quarter, so it's only affecting it a quarter. Here it is half, and then again, if you hold down shift, it'll snap between. Here it is 0.75-ish, and then here it is at 100% opacity. You're also gonna see over here, we have X opacity, we have Y opacity, and Z opacity. So if this is fully opaque, but we wanna turn down the opacity in the Z, we can actually start making these sides opaque, and of course you can take the X, and now just the top and the bottom are opaque, and then the Y, and now we're at zero opacity here. So these are usually set to one, but you can of course change these either way. You can have it halfway, you can have it a little bit, you can have it fully opaque, fully transparent, and that'll drive this entire opacity. So here it is completely opaque, here it is completely transparent, and you can even over crank it. So if you wanna go here and just cause that to turn into kind of a little black hole star there, you can do that here. So you can kind of sink, sink in those sides, or you can dial in full opacity so you have the full deformation of the underlying project primitive. Now let's compare opacity to maximum displacement. So again, max or opacity here is gonna morph and change from completely transparent and even going so far as to go inwards and then going completely opaque all the way out to the new project primitive where maximum displacement, that's gonna be the third cone in or the second cone out, I suppose, the orange one right here. That's going to, you're gonna see as I start bringing this in, it's gonna start clipping in to the original shape. So you'll notice it starts bowing out to project out to the sphere, but then as it hits a certain threshold, it starts clipping in at the edges. So you can actually come up with some really interesting shapes pretty quickly just by using maximum displacement. And you could, of course, you can always use a combination of maximum displacement and opacity if you wanna sort of soften those edges just a bit. You can play with these two values here and see what kind of combination you can come up with. We'll go ahead and put those both back at zero and we're back to our sphere. And while we're on this string of cones right here, we've already talked about every single one of these except this last, which is apply grouping. Um, if I turn polyframe on, you're gonna see this is all one polygroup. If I start shrinking this down, you're gonna see we have two different polygroups because we have this set to blend. It's blending between these two objects. If we turn this, or I'm not sorry, set, not set to blend, set to new surface. If we change this to new surface, you're gonna see a little bit better. Here's one object and here's another object here. And then if we go to projection, you can see they're not two separate objects, it's projecting one object to the other, but they are getting their own polygroup here. If you don't want that, you're gonna say apply grouping to zero, and that'll go ahead and just keep all of this one single polygroup. Now, one of the benefits of applying polygrouping, for example, is if you have a shape like this, you can go ahead and apply polygrouping, go ahead and tap white for accept, hit W to go out of that mode, and now you have a way to go ahead and select one polygroup and select another. So of course, for example, if you wanted to do like B, C, curve tube, you can start dragging curve tube, hold down shift, and that'll snap around the edge of that polygroup here, make that a little bit smaller. And now you can ring or frame individual polygroups. There's a lot of different things you can do with polygroups. This is just one of them, but uh, polygroups are usually pretty useful. And we'll get to another option underneath the polygroups menu. They've done a little bit of algorithm changing on this groups by normals, but we'll get to that later. But polygroups are usually a good things to have, so generally speaking, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this project primitive apply grouping set to one by default. 